Thank you, Father. We honor you, Lord Jesus. Honor and glory to you, Lamb of God. What a day. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you for your mercy, your love, your goodness, grace, and kindness that I knew every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord, towards us. We appreciate you, Lord. Once again, Father, this day we come before you in reverence, in holy adoration. We acknowledge who you are in our lives, in our space. We acknowledge your mercy, your love, your goodness. We, we offer our hearts to you this morning. In adoration, Father, we lift our hearts, we lift our hands to you. We proclaim this day, ruler of the nations, you are exalted. You are exalted, you are exalted, you are lifted high above all. Thank you, Father, for the outpouring of your spirit. Thank you for the washing of the water of your word this morning. We bless your holy name. We lift your name on high. Oh, hallelujah. Praise to you. We celebrate you this morning. <clears throat> we exalt you. We extol your name. Lamb of God, you are worthy. Holy are you, King of glory. The heavens are filled with your glory this morning. We bless you. Have your way in our lives. Take your place this morning. Sit once again within the midst of our worship. Let our praise rise up to you as a sweet-smelling savour, O oh God. Like, like an early morning aroma, let it rise to you. Let our hearts, O oh God, this morning exalt you. Oh, hallelujah. Praise waits for you, O oh God, in Zion. Your beauty and your majesty is what we see. We glorify you. We magnify you. We exalt you. Have your way. Take your place this morning. <clears throat> Our glory to your name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise his holy name. Praise the Lord. Forget not his benefits. Our oh, Father, you've crowned us with loving kindness this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your goodness and mercy that are ever new. Oh, hallelujah. Praise to you. My heart rejoice. I celebrate you this morning. In the beauty of your holiness, I proclaim your glory. I declare your majesty among the nations. King of glory. You're worthy of honor. Oh, hallelujah. Our God is glorious. He's awesome. Welcome this morning. If you're joining us in this morning live broadcast, I want to welcome you to this glorious day. This is the day of the Lord. This is the day of his, of his heart, of his mind, of his will. These are days where the Spirit of God is taking us deeper into the Father's intention. We are being brought to a path that we have never been before. Of course, there are those that have journeyed ahead of us. And as we continue to allow the Spirit of God to lead us in the path that these great men and women have journeyed, that we will also find, amen, rest for our soul amidst, amen, the challenges of our day. The Lord is building his church. The Lord is building his house. And we are the house that God is building. And he's showing us, amen, the pattern, the principles, the blueprint of his, amen, design. We cannot build according to our own heart's desire or according to our own imagination or ideas. No, we have to build his intention. We have to build, amen, his purpose. And of course, when we say build, I'm sure by now you understand that that word build, we use it, amen, in alignment to walk, amen, in obedience to God's will, basically, the Bible says every house is built by a man, but God is the builder of all things. Yeah, so we see that in, in, in the very construct of God, amen, you see the architecture of building, amen, 
the first thing he did in the beginning, the Bible says, let us make man. That is a beautiful point, a place where we derive our concept, amen, of apostolic lifestyle, amen. The apostolic spirit is ever constructing, is ever build, building heaven's intention. It is a desire of God that, that the earth reflects heaven. That's why the highest prayer, the highest prayer, amen, that we can pray is that his kingdom come, that his will be done on earth. For the will of God to be done on earth, like I said yesterday, we have to present to God, amen, a vessel. We have to present to God, amen, you know, a, a, if you will, a life, amen, that he can pour himself into. So that's what we are seeking for. That's what we are praying. That's what we are desiring. Amen. That we become a conduit. Amen. That is malleable. We become instrument that is prepared, that is ready for him. Amen. They say you've kept the best wine for last. I mean, how do you keep that kind of a wine? Amen. You've got to have some form of a container to be able to keep the best for last. So as we continue to speak and look into amen, heaven's intention for our lives, we want to be that container that is preserved, hallelujah, that God can you know, begin to serve his prophetic intention to the nations, that our life becomes amen, that, that instrument, that vessel that heaven can use to pour forth amen, their, their intentions into the earth. That is, I believe, one of the most challenging work of the church, of the body of Christ, that we present to God, amen, a vessel that will house his, his presence, his, his will, his mind, amen, his desire, that, that seasons and time, amen, do not defeat us, that we are not defeated, amen, by longevity of time, the Bible says, because there was a delay in the arrival of the bridegroom, amen, the virgins went to sleep. And these are times where, all right, Many of us have been caught sleeping because of the seemingly delay, because of, you know, what is not happening the way we expect them to happen. Like I said, one of the greatest lie, amen, or, or, or you know, errors that can, that, can, that can happen to us is for us to have a false expectation about the things of God. If you want to journey with God, you have to, first of all, believe God, amen, to help you. You know, I, I remove every ideology, every belief system that society, world, amen, religion, amen, has, has put into your mind. Because those things will become, you know, your, your tagline, your, your expectation will become the, the standards you're using to measure if God is good or not good, if he's going to show up or not. I mean, I got to that point in my life that I had to discard, amen, all the you know, flaws and the, the lies that I bought in the name of seeking God, serving God. You know, either as a pastor, either as a husband, amen, as a father. You have to, we have to continually engage our life to make sure that our expectation, amen, is not, is not flawed, is not false. Our expectations are not based on what somebody, you know, projected to us, what religion and tradition, amen, give to us. We have to believe God to grant us, amen, the, the ability to wait on him, to stay in his word, to find, amen, his heart, his mind. Regarding every area of our life, like we said, purpose amen, unfolds in seasons. So we don't get to one point and think, well, I've, ad I've done everything the Lord will have me to do. So now I'm expecting you know, a breakthrough. That's what we saw in the book of Corinthians. If you read the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, these people, amen, they believed that they had so engaged God or rather they were even expecting the second you know, coming of Christ. The Bible says they lack nothing. They, they were perfected, you know, in, in their giftings. But as you see, amen, the ministry of Paul, amen, the apostle, who is a master builder, wise master builder, engaged, amen, that community. What happened? He began to expose the Corinthian church to themselves. There were factions, amen. There were divisions, amen. There were pride, amen. There were all kinds of things within that church, a church that was actually expecting Christ, they believe that the, the expression of gift, amen, uh, uh, defines their, 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 mat their maturity. They, they believe that because they have been able to build something large and they've been able to, you know, feed the people and do all of those things that suddenly they are ready for, you know, you know that, that, is, that is religious delusion. <laughs> 
But it's not just them. In, it's happening in our day. A lot of people have done all kinds of things in the name of God and therefore believe and think that, yes, they, they deserve certain things. They, they are qualified to you know, say or carry out certain things. And the more we probe into God's word, the more we begin to see, amen, uh, how far we are, amen, from the ways of God. His ways are not our way. His will are not our will. You know, just as I began to get out of the bed this morning, it's like the Spirit of God was saying to me, a lot of people need to understand what intercession means. You know, we cannot intercede when we are biased, when we, ha when we are prejudiced. I mean, how do you intercede when you, when, when you see just one part of the world, amen, as the righteous, and the rest part of the world, amen, as, you know, as the judge nation? Uh, how do you begin to intercede? How do you intercede when your, your understanding, amen, about the ways of God in dealings with creation, in dealing with society, in dealing with life, amen, is already skewed? How do you pray when, when you cannot even see, amen, what the Spirit of the Lord, amen, is, is, is pointing to? You, you can't you can, you can, you can pick the heart of God. How do you pray? How do you intercede for me if you cannot see into what God, amen, is, is saying or declaring for my life? How do you pray for America if you don't know what God, amen, is demanding for that nation in season. How do you stand for India if you don't know, amen, what the Spirit of God, amen, is requiring and demanding, amen, of the nation of India? How do you pray? It baffles me that people who call themselves great intercessors, prophets and prophetess, and all of these great titles we've given ourselves, amen, and I don't mean to sound like I'm bashing or I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, on, I'm negative, but that is just the reality. We want to find, amen, the divine blueprint. Right? When Joshua saw, amen, the, you know, uh, 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 the Lord of hosts, he said, are you for us or you are for our enemy? Are you for us or are you against us? He says, neither. I'm neither for you, neither am I against them. That is the mindset of the kingdom of God. We want to, amen, be able to see all things through the eyes of Christ. We want to look at our life. The reason why I've not given up on myself is because I'm looking at myself at least through the eyes of God. And, and, and that's very important because if you don't look at what the Lord is doing in your life, you're going to get to a point that you're going to either give up on yourself because religion tells you that, look, there's this expectation and you have not met it. Therefore, you are not qualified. Who defines who gets qualified or who gets disqualified? Who, who decides, amen, which nation gets to be accepted or gets to be rejected? We have to begin to, amen, allow the Lord to help us to come into this new position of divine orientation. Amen. This is a new day. It's a day of the Sabbath of the Lord. They have brought us into a new season. And this season, amen, is reshaping our ideology. God is bringing us back to the eternal pattern, eternal blueprint, amen. His long prophetic intention, his ancient prophetic desire, amen. Heaven is bringing it, bringing it back, amen. That which Christ came, amen, to, to accomplish in this season is entering, hallelujah, a point of acceleration. We have to understand the mind of Christ, not the, re, not, the, not the religious mind, amen. Not the Jewish Christ that we know, the Jewish Jesus that we know. We have to see Christ, amen, seated on his throne. Christ who is the ruler over all nations. That there are people in Iraq that are tracking the mind of God. There are people in Iran, amen, tracking the will of God, amen. They have the word of the Lord. There are people, amen, both in Israel and in the land of Palestine that the Lord is walking with. So we have to get our doctrine right. We have to get our theology right. So we don't, we don't paint, amen, where God is moving and where God is very active evil because, amen, some, some ungodly, you know, uh, uh, terrorism. Imagine now saying, amen, all Nigerians are, ter are terrorists because, amen, you, you have Boko Haram there or you say the northerners in Nigeria, amen, uh, uh, you, you don't pray for them. No, you pray for them because you know that there are Christians there. But because you don't know that there are Christians in Palestine, so it's easy to say, well, well, let's just pray for Israel. The Palestinians, you know, they are, they are evil. No, it doesn't work that way. We have to be able to see and judge through the eyes of God. The Bible says we must judge righteous judgment. Hallelujah. 
I feel burdened about this thing because these are things that the Lord, one of the reasons why we are facing the, the challenges that we're facing in society is because first of all, the church itself has goofed. The church doesn't understand the ways of God. The church, amen, is biased. The church is one-sided. Gone are the days where our philosophy and ideology of Christianity, amen, is, is westernized, is, is, is the American idea of Christianity, and you know, or, you know, it's the African, you know, animistic, you know, uh, 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 mixed with tradition of Christianity. Gone are the days where our idea, amen, of Christianity is, 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 is Judaism, is, is Jude you know, you know, uh, yes, is, 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 is Judaism. No, we, 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 we have to begin to shift away amen from traditional belief of what the church is of what you know christianity is we have to begin to that's why a lot of people are saying they're no longer christians they know what they're talking about they said but you still love god yes i still love god i still follow you know the things of god i still do i still fellowship but i'm not a christian because they understand that their idea what people paint to be christianity out there amen is not representing the kingdom of god and that is the heart of the battle. That's the heart of the matter today. And we have to talk about this thing. A lot of people don't want to talk about it, but we have to. And that's why God has placed somebody like us in, a, you know, in the middle so that we can, we can speak to those who are, who, 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 who are in the church. We can speak truth to power. Hallelujah. We can speak truth to be you a bishop, be you a man, an, an intercessor, be you a prophet, be you an, an elder, be you an apostle, amen. be you God knows what. We can speak truth to you amen. because we don't have anything to lose. You know, I was speaking to somebody yesterday and I said, look, one of the reasons why the Lord has not given me i believe amen the 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 the, the, the right amen to go start a local church which i would have loved to do but because he knows that there are certain things you cannot say you cannot speak within the context within the confines of a local church people people will believe that you're biased that's why or you don't want them to no but you see when god and this is the reason why a lot of people of course don't want to take this kind of ministry because you know they, they think of their you know their survival all right if i say these things how am i going to get you know uh, my needs met all right who is going to pay god knows what yes yeah when you when you consider economy before you think of the things of god you will never become a true prophet you will never become a true you know vessel that 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 that, that speaks the heart of god so i depend amen on the goodwill of people those who love the truth to hear what, what we're saying and say, ah, I love what this man is, is talking about, amen. I'm going to be a blessing to him. I love what this man is declaring. So I'm going to make sure that that office he wants to build, amen, is done. That studio he wants to build. Because this is for the betterment of the body of Christ. We are for the body of Christ. Not just for one, you know, locality. Not just for one region, amen. I am placed here, earlier to make sure that the will of God, the counsels of God, the word of God, amen, go to the ends of the earth. That's what we're doing. So we will say the things that you don't want to hear. But it's scriptural. We will declare, amen, what you feel, amen, uh, 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 will, will hurt your feelings, but it's scriptural, amen. Gonna the days where we select, amen, what we want to hear. Gonna the days where we select what we want to listen to. Yes, I know some people turn up to our channel just to listen, you know, and try to judge what we're saying. But guess what? Who cares? We speak the truth. We're speaking truth because only the truth that will set us free, only the truth, amen, will set us free. Anything outside of the truth, and guess what? Truth always hurts. When you hear the truth, it hurts you it, because truth goes to deal with, amen, your, your flesh. It goes and deals with amen your idea truth goes and deals with your belief truth goes amen and deals with your tradition truth goes and begin to scrutinize amen what your father and your great grandfather have told you and you have bought it amen truth will challenge amen your value it will challenge your nationality it will challenge your 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 sense of you know uh, uh, humanity it will challenge amen your 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 belief it will challenge amen your your sense of worth it will challenge your identity that's the power of truth that's why today's society, amen, they, 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 the whoops society are fighting everything that is truth. But you can't fight it because everything that we are is created by the truth. You can't fight the truth. You can't run away from the truth. You think, oh, this guy just loves to declare these things. No, no, no. If you know how, 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 how long I've, I've run away from the truth, how long I've tried to avoid preaching these things. 
You can't, if they, if they mark you, if they point at you, if they say, you, you have been chosen, you can't hide. You can run, but you cannot hide. The truth will find you out. The truth found me out. You think I'd also love to, you know, live in a big mansion like those men. You think I don't want to ride a nice big cars like they do. No. Who doesn't want the good things of this life? But when you stand on the side of the truth, you get that thing, but you'll not get it when you, when you want it. And guess what? You may not even get it. And that doesn't mean you're failed. <laughs> Are you getting the point that we're making? The Lord is our portion. They said, amen, that the Levite, amen, must not have a portion among, amen, the tribes. Because the Lord himself is their portion. The Lord is my portion in the land of the living. So even if I decide that I, I, I want to say something else, God has a way of twisting my mouth, amen. God has a way, amen, of pulling those things out. Even before I think, oh, what am I saying? Well, the, 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 the truth is out. You say it. Why? Because that is what, amen, a called prophet is assigned to do. The ministry of a prophet, amen, is a bearer of the truth. It's not just to proclaim. It's not just to declare what is coming in the future. The ministry, the, the first core ministry of a prophet, amen, is to stand and proclaim the truth. His, his, his duty is not to defend it. It's to declare it. The ministry of the prophet is not to defend the truth. It's what? It's to proclaim it. You like it, you accept it, you don't want it, you reject it. But he must declare it. Amen. The truth, must, the truth is like a virus. You must release it into the atmosphere. Yes. It's contagious. You see? No matter how we wear masks, <laughs> this thing is in the air. It's like this thing selects who dies, who lives. <laughs> You got to, you've just got to wake up and understand that we, we, as long as you're breathing, hallelujah, you will hear the truth. And it's only the truth that sets us free. So it's not something we, I want to hear it, I don't want to hear it. Who, who cares about that? Scriptures will speak to you. And God is, God is unveiling his truth to us. God is opening. The, they are opening the books to us again. Hallelujah. They are opening the books to us again. They are opening the, the heart of God, the mind of God to the nations, to the church. And we like it or not, we have to respond, amen, to the demand of the Lord for this new day. We have to respond to the intentions of the Lord. We have to respond to the cry of the Spirit. I found this man, this guy called Stephen, amen, very interesting. And I'm looking at Stephen, amen, as, as a powerful pointer to what you would define, amen, as a true carrier of what is called the apostolic ministry. Remember that the apostolic ministry, amen, is a, is a spirit that must be poured into a vessel. So we've been dealing with, amen, the, 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 the release of the spirit, but we're also looking at what the vessel that will carry, that will contain, amen, this, this spirit. When God says, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh in the last days, hallelujah, that pouring is not just going to be poured into some air, you know, into some region. No, it's going to be poured into people. When God speaks, God speaks to people. When God pours out his, his spirit, amen, he pours it into a people, amen. Yes. Whenever God wants to move, he's looking for people that he can move through, people that he can speak through, people that he can walk through. Amen. The intentions of God are always carried out through human vessel. That's the reason why God created man to show forth his glory, to show forth, amen, his splendor, his, his counsel, his glory. Hallelujah. Yes, man is the, is, the, is the very heart of the expression of the glory of God. What is man, amen, that, 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 that you so, you are, you're mindful of him, you're so mindful of him, amen, that you visit him. There's something about, about this man that God creates, hallelujah, that God amen, uses to display his glory to his creation. And Stephen begins to show us, amen, some dimension of, of a life, of, of a being that carries the spirit of God. When we say we are carriers of the spirit of God, what, what, what are we supposed to be seeing? What, what should men, amen, be, be, be seen around us? What kind of life, amen, they, 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 they should be experiencing? What kind of a dimension, amen, of grace and power should be flowing out of them when we say we are carriers of the spirit of God? We have been poured into. God has poured himself into, into us. What kind of life, amen, should people be experiencing? 
That is what we see in the life of Stephen. And I think it's important that we continue to flag all this point because I believe that the more we understand, you see, this thing is not by might, it's not by power, like the spirit, like the scripture says, it, but by my spirit, saith the Lord, the spirit of God is at work in us. There's something called the workings of God. There's something called, amen, the things of God, the things of God. Spiritual things are tangible. Spiritual things, amen, are systemic by design. I was sharing a few days ago, I said, the fact that we, de we define it to be spiritual does not mean that it does not have organization. When we say something is spiritual, it doesn't mean that that thing, amen, has no form, has no direction. Spiritual things, amen, has, has form. Has form, amen, yes. They have life. They have feelings, hallelujah. Spiritual things has direction, hallelujah. Yes. Even when we say the beginning was formless, in that formless, there was a vision, there's something that God had in mind. There's something that he wants to bring forth. You can't create something earlier without an image, without, you know, a proud picture, without, when God said, let us make man in our own image and in our own likeness, that tells you that, amen, God is a spirit, but God has an image and he has a likeness, meaning he has a form. He's a being, hallelujah. Are you getting the point that I'm making this morning, friends? We have to track all these realities, amen, and find how these things can become real to us. In our sp spiritual things must become real, real to us. It must be real to me. It's not just something that I talk about. It must be real to me. It must be tangible. It's, it's, in, it's from that realm that you are able to stand, amen, and defend yourself when you are being judged. Have you noticed that, amen, many of those in the scripture who were brought before, amen, certain, you know, evil power systems of this world, they didn't need nobody to defend them. Even Paul, earlier, who was a lawyer by profession, had to defend himself. Moses he had to defend himself, amen. We, we have to come to a place, amen, of spiritual, amen, competence. And I'm going to be sharing, I'm, I want to show you, I'm taking you somewhere this morning that you want to begin to pray, Lord, I need this kind of life, amen, that Stephen expressed. I want to be, amen, a Stephen to my generation. I want my life to express the kind of quality of, of value, the kind of quality of, of knowledge and wisdom. When you say wisdom builds a house, Stephen is a reflection of the architecture of the ministry of wisdom. That's not something that just happened to us because we wish it. You, you have to deliberately engage, amen, the ministry of God's word. You have to engage the ministry of the teacher. You have to believe God to grant you, to open your eyes to, amen, to the ministry of a true apostle that can shape, amen, yes, the, the, the spirit of God pours himself, but the, somebody will have to take that raw material and begin to walk on it, amen, like, like, like Jeremiah was taken to the house of a portal. They have to take the, the material, the elements, amen, that has been released and begin to walk those things within the construct of your inner man. Yes, they have to begin to walk those things within the construct of your inner man. And for them to do that, first of all, they have to knock off the old structure, the old belief, the old mindset. Like I said, truth must first penetrate amen, your life to cleanse you from amen, every false belief, false idea. Truth must first of all get amen, deep into the very core of your structure amen, and begin to walk upon the wrong belief, the wrong ideology, the wrong philosophy, amen, the, the, the idea that you have imbibe, amen, the value system of your environment, your sense of nationality that is not complying, amen, to the very template of how, amen, you, you are to live life and reflect the intentions of God within society. Truth must, first of all, amen, severe you, amen, from, amen, from them. You must become, amen, one chosen called, amen, in due time, in due season. Your life, amen, must begin to move towards that dimension called the wilderness. Living in the land of Arabia for 14 years, they must work on, on your, your, your mindset, your belief system. Every dimension of your life, amen, is, is rebranded. When we look at you, all we see is the kingdom of God. Then Christ can be fully formed and sit. And when you go out there, it doesn't take much to finish the assignment. 
Have you noticed that that is the example that Jesus amen, showed us? It didn't take a long time for him to finish the, the, the work of salvation because he gave God the obedience. He surrendered to his father, amen. For 18 years, we heard nothing of him. At the age of 12, we saw, amen, what he did, amen, in the temple, amen. We saw how he mesmerized, amen, the, 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 the Sandrin, the, the Pharisees, the, the teachers of the law. At the age of 12, we saw how, amen, he displaced them, amen. He made nonsense of their belief. Yet his parent came and said, son, we've been searching, for, we've been looking for you. You never told us what, what you're about, amen. Even though he said, don't you know I must be about my father's business? They say, yes, we understand. But as long as you are here on earth, there is a divine compliance. There's a divine arrangement. You must grow. You must mature. You must come to, amen, maturation. The time, the season for you to begin to proclaim and declare this thing has not come. So he submitted to his parents. He submitted to the ministry, amen, of, you know, of, of, of the mentor, hallelujah. He submitted to the spirit, amen, of, of, of the one that has been called to disciple him. That we have the spirit does not mean that we are ready. We have to, amen, surrender to the, to the spirit of the elders that will build us, that will shape us, that will empower us, amen, that will fill us, amen, with the right spiritual understanding, grace, capacity. You know, I'm looking at Stephen. The Bible says, now Stephen, a man full of grace and power. We're going to be looking into that concept because it speaks deep into some of the things that is missing in our day. And we have to close the bridge, amen. We, if we want to represent the things of God, if we truly want to build a house of God, if we want to build a community, a kingdom community that is fully representative <clears throat> and is fully representative of the intentions of God for our day, then we have to yield, amen, to certain values, to certain principles. We have to be taught in every dimension of the rudiments of the spirit. We have to be taught the ways of God, amen. We have to know what is called, you know, the way, the truth, amen, and the life. Like I always say, you don't want to jump from the way and then go to, amen, uh, 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 the life. You have to go th through, amen, the way, the truth. I am the way, I am the truth, and the life. That is a principle. That is a process of our journey, amen. The, 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 the way, amen, of the, of the things of God is, is a curriculum, hallelujah, that we have to learn in the faculties of the spirit, amen. You have to learn what the, the way, when the Bible says Jesus is the way, what does that mean? That is not just a message you preach to somebody to give their life to Jesus and then go to heaven, amen. That is a principle of how to engage life life. You have to find the way of the Lord in every dimension of life. How does God wants us to, to, to approach life? Amen. When he says, I am the way, what does that mean? You have to know that that is, like I said, that is a whole curriculum. You have to, and we don't know for how long you're going to get to understand what the way means. And then you come to the truth. How many people handle the truth without understanding, amen, the way? They are, they, they, they're handling the truth. They are, they are holding the sword of truth, but they don't know how to use it. They don't know how to engage because they have not learned the ways of God. My ways are not your ways, he said. The ways of God are how to engage, what to engage, amen, how to interact, amen. There are things that you want to do, but they say, no, it doesn't work that way. You can't take that route. You can't, you can't approach that thing that way, amen. They show you the way of the Lord regarding, amen. It was David who said, he said, Lord, show me your ways. God has a way. It's in the way of God that you understand his will. You can't understand God's will if you don't understand his method. The ways of God is this method. I am the way. It's my method to get saved. Amen. You have to come via Christ. Amen. To, to live life as a man, you have to understand. Amen. Christ. You, if you want to understand how to successfully live life as a woman, you have to learn. Amen. What Jesus teach. Amen. About. Hallelujah. Womanhood. You want to be, amen, the, the, a, a good parent. You have to follow, amen, the principles that the way has taught us. They call them the people of the way. They were not called Christian. They were called first Christian in Antioch. But they were called the people of the way. People of the way, friends. People of the way. People of the way. That was what they called them in, you know, before they began to call them Christians. And that, that, that title hallelujah, has not changed. In fact, we should accelerate. We should increase. We should bring out that title. We should be you know, telling people we're people of the way. That does something to our psyche. 
Because in anything you want to find, what is, what is God's mind? What is the mind of the Lord here? Which way would he, you know, they say there's a way that seemeth right unto man. There is a way that seems, it looks right. Your perspective, amen, has been captured. And therefore, you look at that thing, you think, wow, there is a way here. And you know, once you, once you made up your mind regarding something, and you are persuaded, guess what? Nobody can change your mind. Nobody can, can come and tell you, no, 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 because you have made up your mind that that is the way. It seems right to you. But the end is destruction, the scripture says. So to know with the way that is going to lead to life, you have to engage the word of God. When you read the word of God, you're tracking. You want to find what, what's the way of God. What's the way of God, amen, in, 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 in approaching life? What's the way of God, amen, in getting married? Those are part of the things we've been talking about, amen. How do you choose a life partner? What is the method, amen, of choosing a life partner? What is the way of God in going into a business? What is the way of God, amen, in starting a home? What is the way of God in starting a church? What is the way of God, amen, in engaging, amen, a life in the marketplace. What is the way of God, amen, in representing community? What is the way of God? God has a way. I am the way. The I am that I am, amen, shows us there's a, there's a, there's a principle of engaging life. What is the way of God in dealing with societal issues, in dealing with you know, national issues, in dealing with war, in dealing with amen, the economy? What's the way of God? What's the way of God? Hallelujah. In relating between a man and a woman, what's the way of God in dealing with the issues of homosexual? God has a way. What, what is the voice of God regarding lesbianism? What is the way of God amen, regarding corruption? We have to find out. Society is not the one that defines. Society is already by us. Society has its own agenda. When it comes to you know, life, they have their own agenda. They have their own expectation. Yes. Look at what is going on in Canada right now. Canada is becoming more secularized. Canada used to be a nation where, you know, Christianity, the voice of God, amen, is heard. But you guess what? It's because most of the Christianity that were preached, that were proclaimed in Canada, just like in America, amen, were nationalistic. But there were people who had done great work. And I believe that the days are coming, amen, not that far, where there will be, amen, an awakening, just like we're seeing and we're proclaiming it, even here in Africa and across the world, that there will be an awakening, amen, of a true kingdom apostolic voice that are not afraid. They are fierce, yet they respect, they honor, amen, leadership. But they will not bow, amen. They will not suck up to the lies of the enemy. I believe, amen, that they are coming. There are people who have done great work. People like Ellen Cook amen, in Canada. They've done great work. They've been great seed. Great kingdom seed. Some. And those seed will begin to germinate. So right now we got into a point where amen, the world system is challenging the things that we call Christianity. They're shutting every value system that defines God. They're shutting it down. But that's not the time to run away and go look for some cave to hide. That is the time to go, amen, and, and, and sit, amen, at the foot of the word and say, God, teach me your ways. Teach me your ways. Te I want to find your will so that when I go out there, amen, amen, when I go out there and I'm being challenged like Stephen was challenged. When I go out there, I'm being challenged and they call me to, they call your, 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 your value, amen, to question. They call your principle to question. I'll be able to speak with boldness and say, this is what God says and that is where, amen, we stand. Stephen was full of faith. The NIV said was full of grace and power. Dunamis. We cannot have, amen, we cannot afford to have, you know, a, a, a faith that, 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 that is lacking in the demonstration of the power of God. I say we cannot afford one of the things that is going to shake, amen, this, 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 this the days that we have entered, amen, is a company of people, amen, who are full of what I call, amen, apostolic power. When they speak, the Bible says the place will shake. When they speak, the place will shake. Please pardon me. I'm just going to put on my glasses because of the, you know, the light ray. When they speak, the place, amen, will shake, will literally shake. Why? Because these people are people that have been, that have been 
trained. They have been trained. They are like the, like the, they are like the men of David. They have been trained. They know how to use both the left and the right hand. Hallelujah. They are skilled. That is what you will begin to find in this, in this guy that was called to be a deacon. Yet this guy was full of grace. Full of grace. I'm going to quickly show you something. Of course, we know that that word grace means the ability to express faith. That's why some translation, you know, will say it was full of faith. No, the, 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 the right translation is that it was full of grace, the enabling. I want, to, I, want to, I want to show you this quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Now, in, in Acts chapter, chapter 6, in Acts chapter 6, verse 8, the Bible says, Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, did great wonders and, and, and miraculous signs among the people. Among the people. Not that. Remember, this guy was just called to serve table. That was what this man was called to do. All right? Basically, he was called to administrate, you know, a social welfare. You know, it was to take the department, amen, of, you know, social welfare. You, you remember I told you that the church is not social welfare. All right? We, we, we assist. We help people. We do what the Lord will have us do. The, the world system gave it a name. They say social welfare. We don't, the, the, the Lord didn't give it a name. That's part of who we are. Amen? How the Lord anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Who went about doing good? He went about. So let's not allow the world system to define to us, amen, our position. You see, let me quickly say this. You see, the world don't mind us to serve table. Them, as long as our serving table does not encroach, amen, on their policy making. Come on. The world doesn't mind us to serve table. As long as our serving table does not, you know, demand us to want to run, amen, for, you know, for local government, you know, uh, uh, council. As long as we are not seeking, amen, to, to, to voice, amen, the, 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 the will of God regarding policy that deals with, you know, a uh, 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 you know, a, a abortion. As long as, amen, our policy, amen, our, you know, our, our expression of, you know, serving table does not encroach with, you know, the decision that defines, you know, you know, finance and housing and all of these things that will touch, will touch their, the very heart, amen, of their agenda. As long as we are not seeking to choose, amen, who should be the next president, they believe that, amen, as Christians, yes, we, we are just designed, amen, as assigned, amen, to basically serve table. Talk about Jesus, but don't talk about him amen, in a way that will that will influence, that will affect, that will offend, you know, their position. Yes, Jesus can be, you know, a, a, a guru. He can be a grandmaster. He can be God knows what. He can be anything, but he's not the son of God. Jesus cannot be God. The moment you begin to say Jesus, amen, is supreme and his word, amen, is supreme, and then they, they, suddenly you become the enemy. But they don't mind you build school for, the, you know, for, their, for their children. They don't mind you, you, know, you know, do good things. They don't mind you open a soup kitchen. They don't mind you do all of this. But the moment you begin to raise you know, the bar and say, no, but wait a minute. Yes, we we'll do all of this, but we are also seeking to preach, to heal, to deliver, amen, to cast out demons. Then there's a trouble then there's trouble we, t we talked about this when we I, I guess about two weeks ago when i said amen the church is not a social welfare center because the moment we allow the world the world system to rope us to to limit us to you know a, a community you know center you know a social worker center then 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 they have then they have they, they, then they have stripped us amen of the spiritual life that we ought to be injecting into society you got to understand that, amen, the back end of Jesus going about doing good, amen, is to, is to deliver, is to restore, is to engage the powers of darkness. There are demonic influence over nations, over community. You understand? Many of the things that we're dealing with, amen, uh, uh, wanting to deal with those who are into drugs in society, those who are into, uh, you know, uh, 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 corruption and all of these things. Now, government will continue to try to use, you know, you know, uh, 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 social, you know, ability and, and, and resources to, to, to want to deal with this thing but that's the best they can do all right there are certain you know issues in fact most issues cannot be dealt with just by trying to counsel you've got to be able to locate the spirit behind amen that waywardness you've got to be able to locate the spirit behind amen that that community that is that that has become you know a drug you know haven you have to be able to you know identify amen the 
power, the principality behind, amen, that, that, that community that, amen, their children are becoming, you know, perverted. You have to be able to understand the spirit in that home, amen, that is causing all kinds of evil, amen, to take place. And you have to address that spirit. Government don't have such power. The government of, of the power of government is limited. The power, amen, of social workers are limited. The power, amen, the power to change society, amen, is not in the hand of government. It's in the hand of the church. That's why you fix the church, you fix society. I told you some, not too long ago, well, it's been a while now. I went to counsel, you know, this family and, and, and this man has got the son, a grown-up son. Who, you know, who, who has been afflicted by, you know, this demon. The guy just, he, he, he hits his head on the wall. He, I mean, he, he punches the, 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 you know, the wall. You see blisters all over, his, all over his hand. You see his head bleeding. I mean, he does all these things. And they've been trying to counsel. Tell me, who's, how, do you, how do you deal with that as, a, as government? But engaging that spirit, amen, in the name that is above every other name. You see, but, but when, the, when the world look at what we're doing, we're using the name, but the name has become, you know, a, a trend. It's become, you know, an Hollywood, you know, a, a, a make-believe thing. We, we're using the name of Jesus, but we're using it to make money for ourselves. And we're using it to do all kinds of crazy things. How do you think they're going to believe how do you think they're going to follow us when they know that? I mean, they can see. They can see our books. They can track amen, our accounts. They know. They know how, you know, money is being, is, being, is being passed from one place to another. They know, you know, the, the money laundering that we're doing. They know all of these things. They can see it because they, 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 they remember, they, they control the system, at least the financial system. They know all these things. And they know that many of our people are not genuine. But they want, they want the truth. Just like uh, 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 you know, Nebuchadnezzar wanted the truth. He had the dream. He had forgotten the dream. But there are people around him who claim that amen, they have power. They, they connect with the gods. They have the spirit of the gods among them. Amen. They can see. They can make things happen. They, they believe that they, they, they speak to the underworld. They speak to the next world. They can connect to you know, other dimensions. They, they can interface you know, the realms and spirits. So Nebuchadnezzar said, okay. Guys, tell me the dream and tell me the interpretation. They said, but why don't you just, just tell us the dream first? Then we'll give you the interpretation. They said, there is, no, there, is no, there is no man on the earth that can do such a thing. This is what the, the astronomers, the astrologers, amen, the, you know, the magicians, amen, the, yes, all the philosophers of Babylon were saying to Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was, was, was worried. He had a dream, but he couldn't remember the dream because the Lord... <laughs> The Lord wiped the, the dream from his mind. You see, when God begins to set up the world, we need to be ready and stop running around, stop crying. God is setting, amen, the world up for, amen, the, for the revelation, for the bringing forth, amen, of his church. None, none of the magicians, none of the gods of Babylon, hallelujah, could dare remind Nebuchadnezzar of the dream. I, I hope you, are you getting what I'm talking about? This is the world that we live in. They've got real problem, real problem, but they don't trust many of us in the church. And so they will go to all kinds of places. And, I, I, and at the end of the day, amen, they will still fail. Oh, they, they give them, you know, you know how the devil does it. All right, you've got a problem. Yes. It will solve one problem, but it will give you a bigger problem. So you are forever, amen, you are forever, you know, connected. You are forever in prison. You say, okay, your, your, your son is sick, right? Okay, go bring this, go bring that, go bring that, go bring this. You bring all of that, yes. Oh, your son is well. Why wow, you begin to say, wow, this thing works. But guess what? It's taking something that's from you. In the next, you know, one year or two, you have another problem. Now you go back to the person, you say, but, uh, so it's a vicious cycle, but you don't know that. You say, but the man, did, I prayed, the man, I did this, I did that, did, but this happened. No, you don't understand. There is nothing the devil gives you for free. There is nothing the world gives you for free. If somebody tells you, I want to bless you, I want to do something for you, you better understand the agenda because listen to this, as they're giving you one, they're taking something else. As they're taking one problem, they're giving you a bigger problem. 
They say, only the Lord Jesus, only the name of Jesus can free you. And the Bible says, when he sets you free, you are free indeed. These are principles that we want to, we want to bring out. But we cannot do that with the same old mindset, with the same amen, old frame of, of, of belief system of, of, of the past. We cannot do that because that thing has failed. It's failed the world. It's failed many in the church. And it will continue to fail. And until amen, we're able to say, oh, but wait a minute, there's a better alternative. Nebuchadnezzar said, you guys, you're just delaying this thing. If you cannot tell me the dream and this interpretation, I will execute all of you. I will kill all of you. Amen. Guess what? Daniel and the rest were also part of because they were seen as people amen, who were able to you know, tap into certain dimensions of wisdom. So when Ariat, you know, uh, you know, when when Daniel saw Ariat, the king's representative, and he said, "Why is the king so bent on doing this thing?" He said, "Go tell the king to hold on, Amen, with, with, with his plan. Let me go consult my God. You see, we have to let the people know that there is a God, Amen, in the land that rules over the affairs of men." This God is not stoic. It's not disconnected because the world thinks, you know, if you, say, if you say there is God, so why is all this evil happening? Why is all that happening? Why is that happening? Why did, excuse me, who are you to, to put God on trial? Who are you to define, hallelujah, how God must walk, how God must move? Who are you to define, amen, how Elion, amen, must, must interact, amen, with his society? He has laid down values and principles for us to walk when we disobey, amen, he watches us until the time, amen, he sees fit to intervene. If you, read, if you read the word, you will understand his ways. You will understand his will. So there is a method, amen. Yes, you, there's a way of God, amen. But that way leads us then to something else, the truth. It's the truth that leads us to life. Are you seeing? I've been talking about this for years. You see that projection, Jesus being the way, the truth, and the life. You have to know this three faceted dimension of Christ. You have to know, amen, all of this. The things of God, amen, are reflective in four. The way, the truth, and the life. But it's not complete. It is the life that brings the light of God. That's the last addition. Jesus is the way, is the truth, is the life, is the light of the world. Because it's life that brings forth light. I am the light of the world. He who walks in me will not walk in darkness. The world today is in darkness. And many are in darkness who call themselves members of the body of Christ. Because they have compromised. They have reduced the values, the standards of God. They have dropped the standard, amen, to, 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 to meet the expectation of the world. That's not what the Lord called us to do. You will agree that what, what, what I'm saying is the truth. If it's not the truth, you have every right to disagree. <laughs> but it's the truth because I'm speaking what is in the will of God, what is in the word of God. I'm not saying anything contrary. I've not used any reference outside the word of God. Um, we're only trying, amen, to, to exegese the word, to, you know, to, 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 to contextualize, amen, the principles of, of interpreting God's word, amen. Lest we take one aspect and run with it and we think, well, yes, this is right. It's right. But it's not speaking. It's not coherent. It's not coherent. Now listen to this. And Stephen, full of faith. This translation says it was full of faith. NIV says full of grace. Now, I wanted to show you something. Thank you, Lord. Mm. And Stephen, full of faith, now the word faith here means pistis. P-I-S-T-I-S, pistis. That's the Greek meaning. And now listen, this is very important, this meaning, because you will, not, you will notice that this, this word faith, it connects to the expression of grace, pistis. It says that word pistis means, amen, to be, to be, to be, 
to have a strong, you know, persuasive ability or capacity. It means, amen, persuasion. So, this is not just about the faith to make things work. It means this faith can sp speaks into the inability to convince people, amen, to, to express Press, amen, the heart of God, the mind of God. This, this, this dimension of, of, of faith, of grace, is speaking into a, a kind of a, a skill. It's a skill. And that's something that I want us to, 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 you know, to, to take note of. Because Stephen is not just about, amen, you know, dishing food and giving people clothing, you know, like we, we will expect. This concept of serving table and the ability, amen, to, 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 to minister to people is, 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 is an imparted grace. Is an imparted grace. All right? Is an imparted grace. It means the ability to convince, yes, to convince from the position of a religious truth. This is what, you know, the, 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 the Greek uh, um, dictionary says. The ability to convince from a position of religious truth or from a position of truth or something that is, that is truthful, to, to bring forth truth from God's perspective, amen. The ability to, to teach, especially, amen, in, in, in reliance to, amen, to Christ. This is the word pistis. It, it, it is the ability to persuade people. So basically, Stephen, if you will, you can say is an orator. But this ability to speak and to express, like we, like we, we, we saw in chapter 7, where he began to describe the history, began to bring the people, because they, they, they were challenging him on, a, on, a, on an issue. Let, let, me, let me read the scripture again. Now Stephen, the man full of God's grace and power, did great wonders and a miraculous sign among the people, Opposition arose, however, from members of the synagogue of the, of the free men, as they were called. Jewish, of, uh, 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 Jewish from Cyrene and Alexander, as well as uh, the province of Cilicia and Asia. These are the guys that came together, all these guys. The Bible says, these men began to argue with Stephen. Have you noticed these people? This, 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 this culty guys, this, whoever they are, amen, but they are called members of the free men. So this must be a different group. This must be a different, you know, you know, uh, 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 ideology, all right, of course, that have been allowed, amen, to grow in, in, in the society. The Bible says they, they opposed, amen, Stephen. They were arguing, all right? They were arguing with me, meaning they, these guys were intellectual. Maybe they, they pride themselves in, in, in some intellectual knowledge about Judaism and, you know, and, and the philosophy of the world and all of these things. Amen. The Bible says, opposition arose, however. So there was a test. There was a test of what was described, amen, you know, about Stephen. Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power. Now I was trying to explain that that word, amen, you know, grace, amen, speaks into a dimension of a quality of faith, amen, that is pistis and is the ability to bring persuasion. Stephen can, can bring you to a point to see things, amen. He's not going to fight you. He's not going to be screaming and shouting, amen. In fact, Stephen, amen, can, can cast out. Remember the Bible says, because amen, they, they, they chose Stephen and the rest. In verse 7 of, 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 of verse 6, the Bible says, So the word of God spread. The numbers of the disciples amen, in Jerusalem increased rapidly. A large number amen, of priests became obedient to the faith. So you now understand why amen, Stephen amen, was being challenged. Because he was able amen, to persuade, amen, you know, through, of course through the power of the Spirit, he was able to persuade, you know, Jewish priest, they got converted. I mean, that is a big fish. That's a big one. And so, this guy came to want to challenge Stephen. Amen. The Bible says these guys who, who were from uh, 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 a group called Amen uh, Freemen, as they were called, Jews from Cyrene, Alexand uh, from Alexandria, and of course from the pro province of you know, pr you know, uh, Cilicia and Asia, they gathered together. This man began to argue with Stephen, but they could not stand up against his wisdom or the spirit, amen, 
or the spirit or the spirit by whom he speak. They could not, listen to this, the Bible says they challenge him in argument, but they could not stand his wisdom of the spirit that spoke through Stephen. When I, I, want to, I, want, I want to begin to round it up amen, at this point here. We're going to leave it here so that tomorrow I can come back and then we'll see how we can you know, expand on this. You, you notice something today in the church is that the, the, the world thinks that we, 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 <laughs> we can't think. The world actually thinks that we do not have the power to persuade. We do not have the power amen, to make our argument. And this is the area where, amen, the concept, amen, of biblical doctrine. And listen, biblical doctrine does not exclude us, amen, from learning, hallelujah, the, 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 the things of the world, the language of the world, the language of Babylon. After all, amen, Daniel understood the language of the world. Moses understood that. In fact, Moses was taught, amen, in, in the university, in the ways, in the knowledge, amen, of the Egyptians. But yet you could see that those knowledge, amen, did not influence him. And this is the point. You know, I find it very challenging that many of us, we've gone to schools, we've learned all kinds of things, and we have imbibed those things that we have learned against the values of God. And that's why you notice that we send our children to school. Yes, we can, we can teach them what Jesus is, amen, who Jesus is to them, amen, in their primary school secondary is good but when they get to university guess what they collapse like a placard why because amen, they, they, what we have taught them amen as as christian doctrine as christian foundation as christian ideals amen is not solidly based and is not amen something that is that they are persuaded on so the moment they get to university of course which is a community where you all kinds of philosophy begins to bombard you so if you're not established if you're not well founded on the truth, guess what? In university, your children are going to be joining God knows what cult. Maybe another, you know, a, 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 a cult of free men. Yes, it's in university that our Christianity gets to be deflated. In fact, in this part of the world, before they even get to university, amen, in their high school and secondary, you know, many of them, I mean, we, we, today we've got, we've got secondary children, amen, secondary school children, amen, who are into cults. I'm not just talking about doing naughty things, you know, you know, messing around with girls and boys and drugs. I'm talking about they are into call, they are into satanism. They are into all kinds of, you know, demonic activity, you know, knowingly we go into it. Why? Because they look at what we talk about as Christian as weak. This thing has no adventure, has no life. Uh, has, I mean, if you are able to express and show them, amen, the wisdom of God, the grace of God, the power of God, amen, the authority of God, if they can see it, guess what? It will be very difficult. The same thing speaks to what I was talking about, you know, a uh, uh, few, few, few weeks ago about Al-Qaeda, you know, the terrorist group, amen, uh, going to Europe, amen, to harvest for themselves, amen, to recruit young men and women to join them in, in their crusade of, you know, building the caliphate. Why? These people were exposed. These people, many of these people, you know, were even Christian. Many of them came out from Christian farm. But guess what? All the things that they were thought as Christ Christianity was weak. It has no capacity. It has no ability, amen, to sustain them. To the point that a lot of them are looking for meaning to life. So when, when this excite, ex, excitement came of building another caliphate within the world system, they said, wow, this is a good one. Uh, I think I, I'm going to join this. So they joined them amen, because they were hungry. They were adventurous. They were searching for something outside of the norm. They're looking for something you know, outside of what they, they used to. And it's important we, we understand this point. It is important we understand this point. You get to be defeated when you meet people, amen, who are highly skilled, who are highly intellectual, who are highly knowledgeable, all right? And you, you don't have, amen, a true foundational, a well foundational, you know, base of truth. Guess what? You will be flawed. That's why it's not enough, uh, enough, enough to listen to people who just preach Jesus can heal you. Jesus can restore you. Jesus can give you a wife. Jesus can give you money. It can make you, no, no. You have to be able to understand and the principle of Priscilla and Aquila, who will teach you the way of the Lord, who will build you, amen, and who will help you to understand what the world system stands upon in terms of values, in terms of their ideology, in terms of their you know belief system. 
I, they, they help you to understand how, how weak that foundation is. Not just telling you that the world is going to hell. The world don't, don't, don't have Jesus. Therefore, they're going. No, you've got to understand their argument. So that when you are speaking like Stephen, you can defend the faith. It was Peter who told them, he says, amen. He says, study to defend the faith. Your faith. They said, if Jesus asked the question, he said, he pray, he hopes that when the son of man comes back, he will still find men walking in faith. Wow. Because there would have been all kinds of beliefs and religion and demonic doctrines, amen, that will have inf in 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 infected and influenced society to the point that those things today are creeping into the church. All kinds of foreign doctrine, lies we have imported into the church. And people are buying it. Sat Satanism, amen, is, is, is rising. Amen. Church of Satan is rising. All kinds of, you know, demonic doctrines are rising up today in the body of Christ. Why? Because we don't give time, all right, to get to know what the word of God says. I'm saying there's a, there's a, there's a lesson to learn in Stephen. Stephen, a man full, amen, of the spirit, full of grace, full of faith and power. You've got to understand the combination, all right? Stephen was full of grace, but he was also full of, amen, dunamis. Stephen was full, amen, of pistis and was also full of dunamis. Dunamis. It was full of the ability to do miracle. It was full of, amen, the ability, amen, to bring the power of God to bear. It was full of the power of God. It was full of what you call power strength. That dunamis was, was strong to the point that he could, he could exercise, amen, his, his faith over a person that has been exercised by demonic influence. He could, he could, he could, he could command, amen, false spirit, wrong spirit to come out of people. But he was called to just serve table. Are you seeing the point that I'm making? That when next, amen, you, you, you're trying to do, do uh, you know, soup kitchen and try to feed people in community, you also need to be able to factor the position, amen, of power. Because listen to this, the church wasn't just trying to feed people. They were trying to heal people. They were trying to deliver people. They were trying to set people free. Amen. That every food you give to people, when they eat it, amen, they should, they should have a different feel. It shouldn't just be about, oh, well, we ate nice food. Tomorrow they're going to be coming again. Because that's what Jesus, I, I hope you understand that Jesus fed people. They came again the second day. Jesus said, sorry, if you want to follow me, Alia, don't follow me because of food. Follow me because you want to be changed. You want to be transformed. He said, you're seeking me again for fish and bread. And he called them to something bigger, something better. Follow me because you want redemption. You want salvation. They said, no, no, no. We don't want that. You see, the world will continue to come. They will continue to come to your church as long as you keep feeding them. But the moment you start telling them the truth and stop amen, bringing them to the point and, and, and place where they must engage their life in transformation, in redemption, guess what? Watch the number. Because they think that the church is a social welfare center. And I'm saying that if that is what you have built your church, your ministry on, amen, just to help people. And you cannot give them hope, eternity. You can't show them the way. All right? You just want to build something big so that the world system can look at it and say, well, these people have done something. They're doing something. Look at what they're doing. If, if the world amen, approves you for what you have done in terms of the structure you have built and all of these massive things that you're doing, guess what? You may get a good praise, but you have not helped the people. To help the people, amen, is to deliver them from, from the bondage that have kept them, from the perversion, from the wickedness, from the amen, low self-esteem, from the wrong identity, from the satanic amen, uh, uh, imposition, amen, from, from that you know, uh, spirit that has been walking through their lineage. You have to bring them out of that ungodly bloodline. <clears throat> that is what it means to transform society. Every year, government, um, uh, they, they, they come out with budgets. They have budget for this, budget for that. But you still look at society. It's like it's getting worse. You ask yourself, where, where, where is the money going into? Because the money is, is being used, amen, 
for the wrong thing. Even when they have good intention, it's, most of them is like, it's like their intention is like a drop in an ocean. We need, that, we need, we need to factor in. So when, you, when, they, when they banish the things of God, the church, we don't want church, we don't want God to be mentioned. Guess what? They are just saying we want to be destroyed completely. And that's, of course, that's what the devil wants. And this is the reason why when we are dealing with things like this, we should not see our battle against the church and the state. No, we should see our battle, amen, from the position of the church against the powers of darkness that has kept society bound and blind. This is the position we want to engage from. This is the position, hallelujah, we want to engage from. This is the position we believe in God, hallelujah, to grant us the grace, the wisdom, amen, to engage. It's from this position we want to interact, amen. We want to rise up. We want to stand like Stephen, amen. The Bible says they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit, amen, in which Stephen spoke. It took the dimension of his assignment beyond just serving table. It took amen, the dimension of his ministry beyond just giving people, you know, nice blankie. It took it beyond just amen, feeding them. Yes, the people need to be fed. Yes, the people need to be warm. Yes, the people need housing. They need all of that. But that work, the assignment of the church is beyond that. Ours, amen, is to bring life, hope to people. When you, when, you, when, when, when you infuse, when Christ is infused in people, when the truth of God, amen, find resident home in the life of people. Listen to this. Not like they will suck up to their poverty, no. But they will have a sense of rest. They will have a sense of peace. And it's from there, amen, that they can rise up and begin to claim what belongs to their own. Because, amen, having Christ doesn't mean that you must buy into poverty, buy into lie, buy into lack, buy into, you know, a falsehood. No, 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 no. Jesus does not diminish, amen, our, you know, our sense of worth. In fact, it increases it, it increases it. Hallelujah. He increases our sense of worth and value. When you have Christ in your life, what is yours, amen, you will reclaim. Because there you have the authority and the power to engage, amen, what the enemy has stolen from you. Now you can take back. All right? Now you can say, no, I, I'm, not, I'm not sucking to, you know, you know, to, to, you know, to just some crumbs falling from the king's table. Now you want what belongs to you. Many of the things that people are receiving in society are just crumbs. They're crumbs. So we have to begin to pray, God, give us the, 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 the position, the, the wisdom, the knowledge, amen, to engage the same life that Stephen, that Stephen, hallelujah, found himself. It was a man full of the spirit, full of faith, full of grace, but also full of dunamis, power. It could make things happen. It could shift things. It could engage the powers over the air. People came from different parts, amen, to engage Stephen. From Asia. They came, hallelujah, to, to attack him. These are supposed to be the, you know, the gurus. But they could not challenge the wisdom and the spirit operating in this man. This is the kind of church we want to see manifest in our day. We want people, amen, whom heaven has touched their lips. We want people that God has touched their eyes. We want people, hallelujah, that their mind, amen, has been touched. They have compassion, but yet they are highly intellectual. Yes, they have the ability to express the will of God. They have the skill, amen, to declare the counsels of God. Yet they have the power to demonstrate what they are declaring. Hallelujah. This is what we are talking about, friends. We, we want to be in the center core. We're, we're, we're not dealing with an extreme gospel. No. It's not all faith. It's not all prosperity. It's not all healing. And it's not all God knows what. No. We're coming to the balance. We're preaching Christ and him crucified. And from that position, we can express all the various facets. All the spectrums of the light we want to express. We want to express all the four faiths. We want to, we want to walk in the sevenfold spirit of Christ. Amen. We want to be seated, amen, as the government of God on earth in the twelfth dimension of his grace. We want to express his will. We're declaring, God, may your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Grant us this day, O God, 
the spirit, the grace, oh Father, of Stephen. Give us the ability, the mobility, oh God, the persuasion, oh God, not to be shifted, oh God. Help us to be firm in what we believe. Help us to be solid, amen, in what your spirit is calling from, calling for in this new day. Like my friend, you know, uh, 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 was preaching on Sunday, amen. We want to sit on thrones, yes. We are thrones, sitting on thrones. We want to be able to govern. We want, amen, the expression of the kingdom of God to be felt from Gaza, earlier to Israel, from Israel to India, from India, amen, to Egypt, from Egypt, amen, to, to, to Australia, from Australia to China. We want the name of God, hallelujah, to be felt across the earth. The Bible says the knowledge of his glory shall fill the earth as the water covers the sea. That's what we want. Beautiful word, I presume. Godfrey gave on Sunday. I was just blessed by that word. Nice word. Beautiful word. Sitting on thrones does not make us become, you know, proud. No. It's a position where we recognize our responsibility. We recognize our assignment and we begin to take delivery. Have you noticed that Stephen did not run away? He was seated. <laughs> he was seated. He was seated. We're seated with Christ in heavenly places, the Bible says. Far above all principalities and power. Men are nothing. Therefore, we don't fear them. They are but the breath. Men are but breath. Until we rise up, amen, beyond the position that men want to place us will be afraid. We have to believe God to help us to rise above the days of men. This is the day of the spirit. This is the day of the spirit. And we pray, Father, grant us grace to take our place. In this day, oh God, that you are calling forth a church without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish, a church without, yes, any ambition, a church without leaven, a church that is built, oh God, yes, with the pureness of the wine of your spirit, a church whose life have been perfected at the quarry, a church being fitted together as living stones, oh God. We pray in the name of Jesus, and indeed our heart will continually say yes. Help us not to forget. From the day of our salvation to the advancement of our development, O oh God, in Christ. Unto that realm where we will come into perfection. Help us to daily rehearse who we are in you. Help us, O oh God, to daily keep our eyes on the things that you are doing in us and through us. Help us not to think that we are alone. He said, you will never leave us nor forsake us. We have this eternal promise. And we remind ourselves this morning that you are God and you are with us. Your eyes are upon us. Your eyes running through and fro the earth. Looking for those whose hearts are stayed on you. Our hearts are stayed on you. Our minds are stayed on you. Father, in all our ways, we acknowledge you this morning. And we proclaim and declare that you reign. Have your way. You reign. Let your house be built. Let your kingdom come. Let your house be built. Let your kingdom come. Take your place this morning. Let every man and every woman who comes in contact with this truth, O oh God, be engaged with the authority, with the same authority, O oh God, that Stephen carried. That the powers of darkness, the agents of darkness could not stand him, could not challenge could not frustrate what was coming out of his mouth we need wisdom to build this house we need wisdom to build us we need your wisdom oh god to to reign in us we need your grace oh god to empower us we need the dynamis of your spirit oh god to go out yes and show and showcase and declare and manifest who we are in you yes lord thank you father we call forth the things that be not as though they were we thank you. We honor you. We praise your holy name. You are worthy, O oh God, of praise. You are worthy of glory. Praise wait for you in Zion. We thank you. I thank you for every man, every woman 
joining us, following us, listening. May you continue to walk in them, construct your intentions in them. May they continue to say yes to your will. If they are tired, I pray, Father, grant them grace, strength to be renewed, O oh God. Yes, Father. As they wait on you, may they be renewed. May they be restored. May your name be hallowed in their lives. Help them to see, O oh God, with heavenly pers perspective. Help them to see with heavenly vision. Give them, O oh God, yes, the tongue of the learned like you gave to Stephen, O oh God. That powers of darkness could not gain say. Yes, we thank you. We bless your name. We honor you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your provision for the things that we want to do here. Thank you, Father, for sustenance. Thank you, Lord, that you will touch the heart of man to be a blessing as we seek to build this office, oh God, this studio. I thank you, Spirit of God, that you will continually, yes, inspire men and women to think what can we do. Do it well to the glory of God, not to the praise of men. Lord, we thank you. May your habitation be built in the earth. May the knowledge of your glory continue to pervade the earth. Continue to saturate our realm, our region, O oh God. We declare it, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, for those, O oh God, who are under the bombshell, O oh God, both, O oh God, in, in Israel and in Palestinians. We pray in the, in, in the land of Palestine. We pray grace, O oh God. We pray, Spirit of God, wisdom, knowledge. Let, the, let, let there be a ceasefire, but beyond the ceasefire, we pray for solution, O oh God. And we know only you have the solution. Everybody knows what should be done. At least most people know what should be done. But we can't play politics, can continue to play politics with the life of people. So we thank you this morning, oh God, that you are bringing change into that realm, into that region. We accelerate the peace of God, not the peace of man. No man, oh God, can, can bring peace to that region, only you. And so we thank you. And in this we declare your kingdom come into that realm, into that region, oh God. Yes, Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We thank you for what you're doing. The kingdom is yours, O oh God. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Forever and ever. Your kingdom reigns forever. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And amen. Praise God. Well, thank you so much everyone this morning that have made it a point to join us. We really appreciate it. Thank you for supporting us. It's quite cold here today in Franjuk, but we bless the Lord. Our God is good. His mercy, amen, endures forever. Thank you for your prayer, your support. Please continue to pray for me. I need all your prayer. And please don't forget, as the Lord will lead you, please support the project that we have here. Yesterday, I just ordered for a 400 you know, piece of blocks. That's just about 5,000 plus. You won't believe it. So we, we believe God that by the end of this month, next month, we should begin the walk. So please, if the Lord touches your heart, be a blessing. Amen to us. Of course, no force. We, we do all this by faith and we hope people will respond in goodwill and faith. Amen. So thank you. I pray that the Lord will continue to cause his good face to shine upon you and give you rest and peace. I pray the Lord, amen, will direct your step, amen, towards his favor. I pray he will open great doors for you particularly, amen, in this, in this new day. I pray that the things the Spirit of God is tearing in this new day will have, amen, inroad in your life, will, will stay, will, will grow as a seed, becoming a mighty fruit, amen, that will be a blessing to the nation. It's my prayer this morning that as you go, you will go with the Spirit of Stephen, yes. You will, ex you will express the heart of God, the mind of God, the will of God, even in your workplace, God bless you. Thank you so much, everyone. Have yourself a blessed and a fruitful day. You know, Father, God bless you. Bye-bye.